If we could just kick off by talking a little bit about how this, um, how your position here came about in the leadership role. Very exciting. Oh no, thank you, Laura. I'm one of the new people to the Bay. So I lived in Wellington and we used to come here for our holidays and we loved it. So we thought if we can get jobs here, we would love to live here. So my husband and I came about eight years ago and we got jobs and have been ever since. And just a beautiful place to raise children and yeah, we really love living in the Bay. Mm, that's yeah. nice, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how we came here. And, um, I was um, appointed Chief Executive two years ago and uh, very much enjoy the role. Mm. Yeah. And, but you've been with Regional Council um, prior to that, haven't you? Yes, I was the uh, General Manager of Strategy and Science, mm. so had a really good understanding. I hadn't worked in local government before, uh-huh. so to begin with it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a whole new set of acronyms. Oh, um, yes. But I have got my feet under the table and really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the people I worked with and the communities we worked for. So I thought, well, I'd actually like to try to be the Chief Executive. Just once to be a chief executive, so I put my hat in the ring and now I'm successful. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Had you held a chief executive role before? No, I hadn't. This, this is my first, first one. one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, what was it about the role that kind of appealed to you, aside from being the boss? But <laughs> oh, I think the just the, the work that had to be done. Yeah. Um, sort of people work here to make a difference for their communities. Um, it's something that people are very passionate about. Um, that whole uh, looking at sustainability. Regional councils are about long-term outcomes, so a lot of our work is about things that happen over a, a series of years, and I really enjoy that, mm-hmm. and I enjoy making that difference um, at that regional level. So it's the, the work and the people, and I thought, well, I would like to um, have a go at leading this organisation. Awesome. So, what, does, um, what does the CE role kind of entail? What's your kind of like day-to-day like? Every day is different. I bet. <laughs> uh, it, it's normally, I spend a lot of my time meeting different people uh, and there's a lot that happens that you you might not expect. Um, I have a very, very good team of people around me, so um, a lot of the time I'm um, actually listening and uh, supporting the people that work for me. Um, this role was really quite a lot of focus on coaching and mentoring. Oh. So we really focused on bringing people leaders up through the organisation on succession planning. So I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's very cool. much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a bit of background in that kind of thing? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Right. So workforce development is probably the key thing that all my past jobs have focused on. So I'm really interested in how um, careers grow, how we can uh, have workforce developed here, how we can make a place where people can come for part of their career, for their new skills, and then move on. So that's something the Regional Council does very, very well. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I really encourage that. Your predecessor um, was also yeah. a woman. Um, is there something in the water with this, that this role kind of attracts women? Or do, or do you think that women bring a sort of unique skill set that's vital to this role? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? No, I, I think it's the best person for the job. Um, I think that there's a wonderful history in local government that women can thrive as leaders, whether it's in this organisation or others. Um, so it is a place that can really um, have that leadership style work well, mm. um, but it, it is really the right person for the job. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have many women in senior positions? Well, yeah. yes, yeah. We're uh, quite chuffed because we've just, we're just part of the Champions for Change, which is a number of organisations around New Zealand. Um, there's ourselves and Auckland Council in it, but there's mm. the police, there's Air New Zealand, there's all the big companies, oh, and yes. we get benchmarked against them. So this organisation, 66% of the senior leadership team are women. Wow. Uh, we have uh, 56% women on our staff, uh, and we really focus on uh, those metrics in terms of how we're benchmarking for Champions for Change. And it's it's not, um, it's about inclusion and diversity and having a diverse and inclusive working place. Mm. We're really pleased with how we're benchmarking against those other organisations. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would that would that stat be um, quite rare for a council, or is that kind of indicative of the changing face of the way that councils are going with more women and more women in leadership positions? No, I, th- I think it is reflective of how how society is moving actually. Mm. Um, but in local government, you see a lot of women in um, senior management roles and leadership roles. But I, I can in the and I'm also part of the Global Women's um, Network, mm. and so I meet with a lot of women leaders in that. 
and yes, it is, it is a societal adjustment that's happening, mm. as you say, Laura, that uh, workplaces are being more flexible, uh, allowing women to thrive more. I think the way women communicate mm -hmm. and work is, um, is, is actually becoming um, people to focus there in terms of leadership strength. And, uh, and yeah, I think society is saying, well, actually, uh, that, that your gender shouldn't make a difference to the job that you get. Mm. And yeah, we right. certainly find it here. So I have people in the Hub Master, all over the organisation, engineers, scientists, um, people in our Hub Master team and our pollution consents. But it's, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or not. Mm. There are no barriers anymore. There are no barriers. Yeah. And it's wonderful. I think it's just fantastic. And it's fantastic. Um, you know, I've got daughters, and it's just wonderful that some of the things that our previous generations fought for, we don't have to fight for as women. Mm, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. As a woman in business, um, what are some of the challenges that you face throughout your career? This can be sort of in your early stages or in, in some of those more senior positions. Uh, well, I still get, even now, I still get as the Chief Executive of the Regional Council letters that say, Dear Sir. Um, <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> My name's Fiona McTavish, she's yeah. still Dear Sir. <laughs> uh, and so there is, uh, there is still a little bit of sort of that, well, you, you can't be a chief executive unless you're a man. Yeah. But it's just a very small part of our society. Uh, I think um, in, it, in the way I communicate, I, I tend to be quite soft-spoken and I really value kindness and mm. caring. So, they're not barriers per se, it's just a different type of style. And so that one is one where, you know, I might be talked over or um, people might not think that that sort of kind, gentle approach is appropriate. Mm. But in the long run, I think it really, really works. And yeah. uh, so that I, I stick to it. Mm. And, and it, it's not a gender issue so much, it's just a leadership style. Mm. Uh, but women probably tend to have that more, um, more of those strengths in terms of how they lead. Mm. Yeah. I guess things are changing a little bit in that way because um, previously women may have thought that they needed to be, um, for lack of a better term, like more like a man in, yeah. the, in these yeah. kind of roles. But um, yeah. yeah, you're a yeah. great example of where that's, that's not necessarily the case, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I, in my past I've worked much harder than men to get, in my, in my mind. Mm. But I would, I, in the past, I would absolutely put in the hours. I'd be the one that was there, you know, pulling all nighters because I wasn't going to be seen as not being able to do it. Mm. Um, now I think our society is changing, and that we're realising you've got to have um, the whole person come to work and have really good work-life balance. Mm. And women shouldn't have to be um, working as um, being the hardest working person in the organisation to succeed. Yeah, it is. I've seen that recently, and that's certainly something that I'm trying to lead in this organisation for everybody, you know. And mm -hmm. COVID's really helped there in terms of having more flexible working um, environments, uh, having trust in people so that they will do their job, whether they're in the office or at home. So I can see that changing. I think that's a very good thing for everybody, and mm -hmm. it brings back that sort of um, focus for parents on children and livelihoods and prosperity and not um, giving them your all to just your job. Mm, and not feeling guilty about wanting yeah. to do those other things yeah. or spend time with the children to Absolutely. bring them up. Yeah. Yeah. What, are, what are some ways that we can support women in business um, in general and also into those kind of senior leadership roles? So I'm a great believer in, in coaching and mentors. I think everybody needs a mentor or a coach. Mm. I think they're just phenomenal in terms of being clear in where you're at, where you want to go, having someone trusted that you can talk to about mm. your professional career. Yeah. Uh, I also think and I was listening to Michelle Obama at the weekend in her podcast, and I'm going to do this, I don't do this, but she would be very clear for her time and her diary. Oh, so yes. you block out time for you and your children, and then the rest of the time is for your work. Mm -hmm. And she, would, she said that she basically went three days a week, but those three days she was on, and everybody knew that she was on, and nobody criticised Michelle Obama that she wasn't seen in all the different states. 
I really liked that mm -hmm. uh, for anybody really to say it's legitimate that I go to the gym or I have a lunch break mm -hmm. or I stop work some days to watch a soccer game or whatever mm -hmm. and um, that being part of your um, normal working week. Mm. I, I thought that was a great idea. It's a great idea, it's quite hard to do, isn't it's it? It's quite yeah. hard to do, but if Michelle Obama can do it, then all the rest of us can. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, um, or have you used a mentor during your career? Pretty much for the last, yes, almost for the whole of my career. Yeah. And certainly as um, a senior leader and a chief executive, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how do you um, go about getting a mentor, like for women that might be interested in going down that road? Uh, so. Uh, Looking at Global Women or Champions for Change, there's yep. a number of organisations that help with people finding mentors. Uh, the Chamber, I think, uh, could be a great place to look for mentors yep. here in Tauranga. Um, and uh, there are there are coaches at, at my work. Um, we're bringing in a mentoring program, mm. oh, so cool. that's just one of the things that we've now got space to do, and that will be helping people within the organisation. I can see local government helping colleagues across government. Um, mm. You will see it, a, a number of sectors do this in terms of supporting each other, whether it's kiwi fruit or um, in the, the fishing sector, so they're very good at it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so like you said, it's just nice to have the other person as a bit of a sounding board yeah. and talk things through. And yeah. Um, yeah, they might have a different way of approaching things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and keeping you honest. Mm -hmm. Like if you said last time I was going to do this, I was going to focus on this and say, how did you get on? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love a bit of accountability. <laughs> yes, yes, so do I. <laughs> what have been some of your career highlights or things that you are most proud of in your career? Oh, I think I'm just um, doing, achieving things that were pretty much impossible. Um, I, I've really enjoyed that. I, I, some of my career highlights when I, I worked for a district health board for seven years and um, we got a $300 million business case that was part of getting that in place mm -hmm. and seeing um, Wellington Hospital be refurbished. I was responsible for Kenny Crew Hospital and Kapiti Health Centre and just getting those up and running. Mm -hmm. That was a huge highlight for me, particularly Kapiti because that, was that wasn't part of the business case to begin with. So we had to seek another $5 million and we got it. Oh wow. It was a, a wonderful union of the community and different providers. So that um, health centre has a primary, it has a Māori health provider, it has a GPs in it. And we didn't have enough money to do all of the landscaping and all of the um, interior, so the community fundraised. Oh wow. Millions of dollars and it's the most beautiful health centre and it was coming together of many different entities. Mm. I really enjoyed that. That's a hard task to unite people. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. It, and it was sort of a mission impossible to begin with, uh, but we got there yeah. and uh, I, I really enjoyed seeing that through. Mm. Yeah. What about um, your time here at um, Council? What are some of your highlights here? Well, I think uh, the key highlight for me, which sounds a bit strange, was when I was a new chief executive, we had the bus network fail here mm -hmm. in Tauranga. Um, there wasn't um, the drivers to drive the buses. And uh, to get that fixed, mm -hmm. that was huge. And I was really pleased that we did get that fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just uh, our relationship with the uh, NZ Bus. It's just come from strength to strength. A very good working relationship and um, we don't have the workforce issues that we had and we're really encouraging people to come as New Zealand buses to work here and just enjoy the the privilege to live in this part of the world. Mm. So that was a real highlight. Mm. Um, we fixed it fast uh, and we had Wellington who had similar issues but we just got it fixed. Mm. So I was pleased. What do you think were some of the key contributing factors to that success? Uh, so we, I have a very good team here. Uh, we have very good um, commercial lawyers. Actually, um, a phenomenal woman who's in, in our commercial lawyer. And so we knew we had to do this very fast, mm -hmm. um, and we did. And I think um, a lot of the credit goes to um, that person in terms of what she achieved. So the right people um, all acting together for the community, for this region. Mm. That made a big difference yeah, awesome. in terms of being very clear what we needed to happen and when. 
Awesome. Um, what are some, some of your goals for the next sort of six to 12 months here at Council? Oh, so um, I'm really interested in the Council is very much focused on climate change. Mm. So that's a very big goal for us in terms of understanding what the region needs and how to best position the region for the future. So you'll hear a lot more from the Regional Council about climate change uh, and from this government. So it's sort of um, a wonderful time for us to really think about our future mm. and what we need to do to mitigate and um, adapt to climate change. Mm. Fresh water, uh, that is a big deal for us too, for all our communities. Um, there's a new uh, government direction and we've got to implement it. And um, this, is, this is something I probably am most concerned about in terms of just fresh water going forward, mm. particularly in the Western Bay with all our growth and having fresh water to service um, our needs as people and, and our industry and our businesses. Yeah. So with climate change in particular, this is going to be something that people increasingly talk about. Yeah. Um, I've got a very stable people team here and um, we're doing very well, so it's about what more we can do for our communities. Yeah. Uh, so those are probably the three goals for me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What, um, what's the kind of general mood of the community um, do, do you find around climate change as, a, as an issue? Uh, so we recently did a resident survey. Not many people know about the Regional Council <laughs> and what we do, but they were very focused on us doing um, more work around climate change. Mm. And I think it depends on where you live in terms of your experience yep. so, and what, what business you're in. So you'll see some businesses who are very much focused there. We've got some incredible businesses in the Western Bay mm -hmm. who are really um, are focused on helping all of us with climate change. There, there was one business that I got to know who um, the mission statement was to move from diesel to sunshine for the um, Pacific Islands. And oh, so wow. they were helping Pacific Islanders to move to a different generation of electricity. So we've got right. some incredible business here, here who are not just focused in the Bay but globally in terms of adapting to climate change. Mm. It is something that we could really be um, on the map for, a real niche for the Bay of Plenty in terms of how we are saying we are addressing and mitigating climate change mm. and helping others because our wonderful natural resources enable us to do that with geothermal and with wind and with solar, mm. we have some incredible sustainable energy here um, that can help us thrive. Yeah, like we've got yeah. a great opportunity here. Yeah. We have a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exciting. Yeah. And, and you guys are already um, utilising that with your own building? Yes, <laughs> yep. No, we, it was very important to the council that we were as sustainable as possible in this building. So um, yes, we, we sell electricity back to the grid and we harvest our water and uh, very efficient buildings. Yeah. Awesome. Um, aside from work, when you're not at work, what are things that you like to do? What do you like to do on your weekends? Oh, uh, so I'm a taxi driver in my. Uh, <laughs> I, I say to everybody. I have a daughter that I um, one daughter still at home, and I spend a lot of time taking her to different sporting venues. Oh yes, yeah. Yes, uh, but I love going up Moel. That was my. I do that two or three times a week. I very much enjoy that, mm. especially when the sun comes up. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and I try and get my garden a little bit tame. <laughs> I spend about I spend a long time in the garden at the weekend. It's a work in progress. It's the season, eh? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to try and grow vegetables. Oh, cool. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoy that. It's a yeah. job in its own. It is, especially when you get the wrong seeds, but that's right. Oh, no. <laughs> Just <laughs> never know what you're going to end up with. Exactly. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs>